synergy of taking on debt and printing more money has led to economic collapse in foreign economies. Take the example of the financial crisis that swept through Argentina about a decade ago. And uh, with the U.S. government pumping more stimulus into the economy, the question is, can the U.S. really afford to borrow all of these dollars? Or is this a recipe for financial ruin? Here to weigh in, Mike Musa, senior fellow with the Peterson Institute for International Economics. He's written extensively on Argentina's financial situation. And our old pal, Peter Schiff, president of Euro-Pacific Capital, who I am sure thinks that we are going to you-know-where in a you-know-what in a big hurry. But I'll let him tell us. Peter. Hey, Mark. You, well, think, you think we are, we are on the road to perdition? Well, look, there's no way we can pay this money back. I mean, we're, we're going to default on it. The only question is, what form does that default take? I mean, is America going to be honest? Are we going to admit that we can't pay and, and restructure this debt? Or are we going to go the route of Argentina? Are we going to pretend we can pay by printing money? You know, but the, the result is the same for our creditors. They're not going to get uh, their, their purchasing power back. Uh, there's going to be massive inflation, and that's going to have worse consequences than default. And, you know, I don't care what these credit rating agencies say. We're issuing junk, bo junk bonds. There's no doubt about it. You know, the S&P and Moody's, they had AAA ratings on Fannie Mae Preferred. Okay. They had AAA ratings on subprime mortgages, and look what happened. Mike, this is an historic day because, for the first time, I agree with Peter. So you tell me that we're wrong. You are wrong. It's nonsense. It is? Okay. <laughs> yeah. How is it nonsense? Well, uh, the, the, the U.S. is not uh, in anywhere near the situation of uh, Argentina, nor are we likely to default on uh, our debt, which is, of course, denominated in our own currency rather than in a foreign right. currency, which was part of the problem for Argentina. In Argentina, the problem was, however, eight decades of extraordinary government mismanagement, um, and we have been nowhere close to that uh, at, at any time in the past. Right. And as far as but the current... Yeah, but remember, <laughs> printing money and to pay back your debt is the same thing as default. Peter, what is the solution Well, it's, it's not exactly the same thing. But well, it's, if it, it sure it is. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 19, oh, oh, time out, time out. in 1980, the debt-to-GDP ratio was 25%. It rose to over 60% during the administration of Ronald Reagan, in which I was pleased to participate. It then fell back down below 30% during the Clinton administration. Now, we're running up the debt at the present time, but I think there is no indication from the history of the U.S. dealing with this fiscal situation that that uh, program you, is, is unsustainable you can't in the simply long term. Look at these debt to GDP. You can't just look at these debt-to-GDP ratios. First of all, our GDP is highly inflated with consumer spending, but look at how we're financing the debt. We've got the biggest adjustable rate mortgage of all time. All the debt is financed with short-term T-bills, just like Americans finance their homes with teaser rates, and the debt is being bought by foreign governments. There is no real private demand for this debt. Once the political situation turns and foreign governments don't want to buy our debt, we have no fault. We, all we can do is, you know, we're just like Bernie Madoff in this situation. We're running a giant Ponzi scheme, and when foreign governments want out, we've got no choice. Is there... It would be useful if you knew what the facts were. I do know the, the facts. That's the deficit. The current account deficit, which ma measures our aggregate borrowing from the rest of the world, has been shrinking over the past two years from over 6% of GDP to about 3% this year. So our Be aggregate foreign borrowing by the economy as a whole has because, in fact been going down because and interest will be lower rates this year than be it has been in the past Because five years. interest rates are so low. What happens when interest rates go up and we have to pay a higher interest rate? You're making the same argument that people, when they bought houses, using teaser rates. I can afford the mortgage now because I got a two-year arm. But what happens when there's a reset? Uh, even when interest rates go up, which will add something to the current account deficit, the level of that deficit is likely to be well below what it was as a share of our national product uh, during the past uh, five years. I don't know, I don't know so how you can jump to that conclusion. You're just making an exaggerated case for what no, really no, a nonsense position. Wait a minute. The type of people, people, number, like you people have been Peter, Peter, Peter making an exaggerated case for years. And look at the really situation. Doing a disservice oh, to the country and to financial uh, uh, markets. Peter, Peter, Peter. First of all, A, let him speak. B, uh, Peter's right, in the, he snuck in a little barb there. You're just giving us optimism without much uh, of a cogent argument as to why you think this is going to turn out well. Well, what I say is we've had these episodes in which we've run up the debt ratio before. Right. 
Right. And deep recessions have been a cause for that, has occurred during the 1980s. Right, but we're then in we an extraordinary situation. Mm -hmm. I believe you'll agree we are in an extraordinary economic situation now. Well, we're seeing a, a recession at the present moment that, in terms of its depth and duration, is about as deep and long as the combined recessions of 1980 and 81, uh, 82. The notion that this is the worst depression since the 1930s is, is in fact wrong. The 37 recession was much worse. The stand well, down after the Second World War was much worse. You, you have to give it time. You're assuming that it's over. We have no idea how long it's going to be. And obviously <laughs> what the government is doing now in the name of solving the problem is making it worse. The bailouts okay. and the stimulus are going to worsen this recession. And remember, this recession is a consequence of the stimulus of the past. We have an overdose of government stimulus. Mike, That's why we're in so much trouble. Before giving you a chance to respond, Mike, Peter, you have a problem with the actions that the administration is taking presently, that the government's taking. What's the solution? Well, unfortunately, the solution is to let the recession run its course. As painful as that can be, we have to let our economy restructure. We've borrowed too much money. We've spent too much money. We have to allow Americans to stop consuming, to stop borrowing. We need to rebuild our savings. We need to invest for productive capacity. We need to allow government to shrink. We need to allow companies that are non-profitable to fail. We need to allow people who made bad decisions to suffer those consequences. We can't keep trying to bail things out. We can't keep trying to reflate a bubble. That's why we're in this mess. I think the problem is we've done it so long and, and we've done so much stimulus that it's not, it can't work anymore. I think, I think we've reached the end of the rope. Mike, you get the last word. Well, again, going back to the last deep recession, powerful fiscal stimulus from the Reagan tax cuts, the defense buildup, and so forth, as well as the easing of monetary policy by the Federal Reserve, together with the natural processes of economic recovery, brought us a six-year expansion that took the unemployment rate down from 10.8% to 5.3%. Now, whether we'll do quite that well this time, I think, remains to be seen. But the extreme pessimism about the economic prospects of the economy and about the fiscal situation uh, is overdone at this stage. Okay. Uh, Peter, if you had to, I know you're a big gold bug, if you had to pick an alternative currency to the dollar, what would it be? Well, I don't think we have to go back to an alternative reserve currency. Before the dollar what was would reserve the currency, best alternative? it was gold. We should go back to a gold standard. Okay, gold should be the reserve. Okay. Gold is money, and we'll have a much better system if we don't have a phony reserve currency. Because okay. if we move to the euro as a reserve currency, ultimately it's going to corrupt Europe just the way the reserve currency status corrupted America. All right, Mike Musa and Peter Schiff, thank you both very much.